full of uncomfortable decisions. You know, the big lose-lose situations where it seems like you want something from each side. Ever try to make nachos from that spray cheese in the can? Yeah, uh, not a good idea. But then again, you really shouldn't even consider drinking that cheesy fun dip straight out of the jar. It won't end well. Trust me. The same goes for memory. SRAM versus Flash. Of course, we want the speed and the reliability of SRAM. But sometimes we want the non-volatility of Flash. Whichever one we choose, we have to worry about the downside. Flash is slow and wears out and requires a bunch of fancy supporting technology. SRAM is awesome until the power goes out and then it's completely blank. (laughs) So, what if we could have the best of both worlds? What if we had the speed and reliability of SRAM with the non-volatility of Flash? Yep, you got it. FRAM. That's not Flash SRAM, by the way. It's actually Ferroelectric Random Access Memory. You heard it here first. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. It turns out FRAM has been around for a long time, but only recently has it started to take center stage in microcontrollers. Today, my guest is Will Cooper from Texas Instruments, and he's going to chat with us about TI's FRAM technology and look at how it can really transform our MCU experience. Before we get started, remember to click the link. There you can download a free white paper that further expands on this topic. Welcome, Will. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hi, Amelia. Thanks for having me. Okay, so we're going to be talking about FRAM today. Now, uh, what the heck is that? So actually, FRAM's not new to the industry, but it is new to microcontrollers. And it's like Flash, but better. FRAM is a memory technology that combines the best features of Flash, like its non-volatility, with the flexibility, endurance, and write speeds that you might find with SRAM. Cool, okay. And taking it beyond that, there are additional benefits that extend beyond these traditional memory specifications. So FRAM, like I said, has been around for a while, and in spite of its name, it doesn't contain iron. It's actually resistant to electromagnetic fields and radiation, and in addition to that, has a bunch of security advantages. So if you think of things like using faster write speeds and lower energy, you can back up information on power fail, and you can even update security keys more often. All right, so I'm on board here. But, Will, let's talk about the application space here. How would this fit into traditional applications? Sure. So FRAM fits into a number of different applications, but because of its low energy and fast writes, it's perfect for things like energy harvesting. Oh, okay. If you take a look at your environment today, there's an abundance of energy. This can be in the form of light, vibration, heat, or even radio frequency signals. Yeah. The key to getting the most benefit out of these sources is to leverage settings where the install or maintenance costs can be high. Okay. And this could include things like remote sensors, and it can include other things where size constraint is a big issue. Okay, sure. Because FRAM is so much faster and lower energy, it means that you have lower peak current, lower average current, which could mean smaller batteries. Mm. And in addition to that, it could mean that you can consume and run your application on less power. Ah, okay. So on top of that, in addition to being 250 times lower energy, 100 times faster, which obviously has benefits and means you can do more with less energy, if you tie it to an application, such as sending wireless signals, on-the-fly data logging is simpler and easier. So you can minimize your wireless transition time with the ability to not pre-erase segments and the ability to access data at the bit level. Huh, okay. So this new IoT stuff, it really needs low power consumption. How does this fit into that ecosystem? Sure. So in addition to wireless energy harvesting sensors, right, there are other types of applications where IoT is really starting to play. Sure. If you look at things like electronic shelf labels, they're becoming really popular in retail environments so that people can basically update all their pricing in the store at one time. Yeah. The benefit with FRAM is that it has low power and is super flexible. In terms of flash to RAM ratios, because it's a unified memory, you can get a 64K device that solves the needs of your system instead of getting a 40K RAM device, which might have 512K of flash. So Ah. this means you can save on size, 
and obviously power with the speed and low energy of FRAM. Okay, that makes sense. So where there's memory, there's normally processors. I'm guessing that there are some microcontrollers somewhere in the story? Right? Yep, that's true, and really happy to talk about it today. We've been working on some microcontrollers that are really revolutionizing the industry with this new FRAM technology. So if you take a look at how we develop these microcontrollers, they're really based on real customer issues. Cool, okay. One of those main issues is application energy. So what you'll see is that a lot of our customers are looking to do more or the same amount of processing on a reduced or equivalent power budget. Ah. These new low power microcontrollers that we've created actually are the lowest power in the industry. They offer active power mode as low as 100 microamps per megahertz, accurate RTC standby power of 450 nanoamps, and even ultra low peripheral power. And if you look at our ADC that can run up to 200 kilosamples per second, it actually only consumes 140 microamps. Wow, okay. In addition to that, we took a look at debugging. A lot of our customers spend up to 75% of their time debugging their application as opposed to actually designing it. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, and we're trying to make that a little bit easier. Excellent. So if you look at our ecosystem, we've brought in this new technology called Energy Trace, and it's really combining pieces from your IDE, your development tool, and even your device. So what that's going to mean is that you can actually do power profiling of your device in real time. Oh. You're going to be able to see curves of where your energy consumption is going. You'll be able to see whether certain clocks are running. In addition to that, you'll be able to see whether you're in low power modes and even whether peripherals are on or off in these low power modes. Very cool. And then further, we looked at complexity, right? A lot of our customers are building many, many applications and they're trying to optimize their systems and make sure that their software design does not get harder, right? Right. With these FRAM devices, we're really trying to give you a simpler architecture. It has flexible code and data boundaries. It, it's simple to write to just like SRAM. So it really is giving you a lot of benefits. Like I mentioned with the applications before, the pre-erasure of memory as well as the non-volatility makes this a great memory technology to get started with. In addition to that, we're really trying to deal with your kind of scalable portfolio story. We want to make sure that our customers can move from one device to another and add performance or memory as they need. And right now we've got almost 100 devices that are orderable from 32 to 128K of FRAM. Wow, all right. So you mentioned this energy trace technology. I'm intrigued, tell me more about this. Absolutely. Energy Trace, like I mentioned, is really giving you a whole new level of understanding of what's going on with power in your microcontroller. Cool, okay. Typically in a system debugging experience, it's a very open loop kind of thing. Sure. You're kind of looking at your code, debugging, finding problems, but there's really no feedback loop. Right. With Energy Trace, that's all different. So in addition to things that we already have, like ULP Advisor that might tell you that you're doing something in your code that doesn't follow a set of low power rules, this piece will actually show it to you in real time. So ah. you can see the current consumption from nanoamps to milliamps, which typically you need a very high end multimeter to get. Yeah. In addition to that, with a multimeter, you're never gonna be able to see what's happening inside your device. And that's the benefit that this thing brings you. And you can get it all for under 20 bucks within MSP430 FR5969 Launchpad. Excellent. And just another piece that adds to this whole ecosystem is that we've got software available to help you start off and use our devices with things like MSP430 Wearer that's also built into our IDEs. All of this stuff is available in Code Composer Studio and IAR Embedded Workbench. Excellent. All right, I think I'm ready to get started. Now you got some kits for me, some reference designs by chance? Yeah, so we've got tons of kits. It starts with the MSP430 FR5969 Launchpad. This is the quickest and easiest way to get started with our devices. Okay. It's basically a baseboard that allows you to plug on these booster packs so that you can add functionality. Uh, you mentioned IoT, you can bring things in like our CC3100 booster pack that has Wi-Fi. You can bring in a CC2541 booster pack, which is BLE. So you can really connect this device to anything you need. And it's all available for under 20 bucks. Very cool. Then if you need to move into kind of your more complex systems and you uh -huh. need all the pins on your device, we've got our standard target boards that we've had on all of our MSP430 MCUs. 
And that's all available with the MSP FET, which is really our programmer debugger that you can use across all of our platforms. Ah, okay. And you'll notice that this MSP FET and the MSP 430FR5969 both support Energy Trace. In addition to that, if you're really looking for a specific application, we've got TI designs now that are out that include everything from software files, hardware design files, and even sometimes orderable kits so that you can get started. What you'll see on this slide here is our new NFC field powered design. And this is a one by one board that you can hold up to your cell phone and the cell phone's field from the NFC card will actually power it up so that it can record information about temperature and wow. send it back. Cool, okay. And then we've also got things that are a little more focused. If you look at our flow meter design, they use our extended scan interface, which is one of the new peripherals on these devices. And it allows you to set up different sensors and basically implement a whole flow design, which could be used for measuring water, heat, or even gas flow. Okay, where can I go for more information, Will? So for more information, we have ti.com slash FRAM. It's the best place to get started on all of these devices and the new technologies. That's where you're going to find links to our product folders, where you'll be able to find the data sheets, the user's guides. But in addition to that, we wanted to make it easy to move from Flash to FRAM. So cool. we've got a migration widget to help you figure out the right device, we've got migration guides to make it really simple, as well as application notes. And then we take it a step further with our communities that have been around for a while, right? We have our E2E support forum, which is where real engineers will be there to answer your questions. And in addition to that, we have the 430 online community, which is a great resource for both answering questions as well as seeing new projects out there based on these MSP430 MCUs. Great. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me, Will. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Yeah, thanks, Amelia. It's been great. Before we go, don't forget to click that link. There you can download a free white paper that further expands on this topic. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton. For more Chalk Talks, check out the EE Journal YouTube channel or the on-demand section of eejournal.com.